Hello everyone and welcome back to my Beyond History series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3 and in this episode we begin with a retry of the landing of Mars Base 1 as practically all of you said I probably should try it one more time and with my luck I'll probably crash it anyway or actually do a worse job than last time, you never know. Uh, so here we go, the parachutes are armed and everything is fine and we will see. Practically speaking, even if we do land it, the probability that I'm going to be uh, getting Kerbals to it at all is low. I need a lot more practice as far as landing things whoops, uh, close to each other. And I'm just going to take it as additional data, really. Uh, why are there city lights on Mars? Let's not think about that too much. Okay, so we are retrograde. I am pulling down the orbit to, say, under 40 kilometers, I think it was. I'm aiming to land around there somewhere. Mars is going to rotate a bit, and we're probably going to miss this nice uh, wet patch here. This is obviously a little... I mean, it's got the river valleys and everything. I think, uh, to some extent, there's, like, a planetary protection issue as far as landing people in certain locations on Mars. Uh, they, they don't want people to land where there's likely to be life, but I don't know exactly where those locations are. In fact, they don't even want to land robots in uh, certain locations right now. But this area still isn't the best spot for, like, polarized. You'd have to be all the way up here to get any of that. But we're not at inclinations to take advantage of that anyway. And I would have to do a scan of Mars in order to verify that we have such resources, and I have not done so. Some of their fuel has been used by the RCS system, but we have 500 meters per second. And I sure didn't use all of it when I did the descent last time. We need to start them out earlier, but not too early. Not to the point where we deplete it before reaching the surface. If we take a look at our burn time, it's two minutes. And we start off at a thrust weight ratio of one, which is not great. The thrust weight ratio on the, on the crude lander is much better. It's got seven of these Gemini lander engines. And I believe it doesn't ride a heat shield that, uh, through descent. As far as how much delta V it has for the descent phase, they carry about 600. I think I've kept the heat shield on the Ares Pod G we have, but it was not my intention for it to ride the heat shield down. The intention was to use the the Gemini lander engines to slow down a bit for the parachutes and then use them to do the final touchdown. After that they'll have 4,200 to make orbit again which if you consider the surface velocity here of 3,400 meters per second seems reasonable. That means uh, you get uh, 700 to go up a bit and uh, work against gravity may be advisable to get the Ares Pod G's, well the Ares Pod G, just one of them, into a lower orbit first and so use the heat shield to aerobrake into a lower orbit before actually making the descent. Nice thing about that is it can spend more time passing through the atmosphere before actually making the landing and therefore slow down. I suppose one little indicator that we could take advantage of is landing guidance. Show landing predictions. This will allow me to light the engines. We've got two minutes of potential thrust here from the engines, it says. Oh, I didn't notice. Landing guidance has a predicted orbit after aerobraking thing here. Though it'll only show that when we're passing through the atmosphere, at which point it's too late to make adjustments. We've got a bit of an issue with cities on Mars. <laughs> um... So it's looking like we're landing about here. Not exactly in the area I was looking for, but not bad. Okay, 1,300 meters per second is when they popped out, and about 8 kilometers, so 
That's good information to have. Okay, and... Let me just try those out a bit. A at the very least, uh, we'll lighten up the load before touchdown. And get the gear out. Oh. I think I destroyed the landing gear. Okay, we've got some parachute deployment. Let's dump the heat shield. Don't, don't hold on. <laughs> Make sure it doesn't smack into us. Oop, uh, could I get a straight down and up thing? It's got a minute left, and it says 13 seconds to land. Surface horizontal speed seems fine. It feels like uh, we'll have a lot of margin with the crude lander since that has 600 meters per second to the landing. Oh, why? Don't, don't, don't! Why? Why, why are you tipping over? Why? <sighs> Man, it's just gonna be like this, isn't it? Uh, we landed on a slope, I guess. Well, that's that's just desserts for you, honestly. Um, I, I I did explode the landing gear, so I, I didn't quite understand that. But maybe it collided with the heat shield or something. I shouldn't have extended the landing gear when I did. But uh, yeah, I, I guess this is fair enough. I demonstrated to my own satisfaction that I could have done a good landing if we were on a flatter ground. I guess we ended up with more surface horizontal speed than I thought. I thought we were at 0.1 meter per second. Didn't seem like it should be tilted like that, but I guess I made a mistake there. Um, yeah, and we're in the same situation, so go figure. Uh, it is what it is, and this is how it's going to be. I'll extend the solar panel. And the probability that we're going to land something else here, we'll try. We'll try to land our other mission in the same location, but the chances that we're going to actually manage that is low. Uh, on the bright side, the periapsis... Well, no, I guess it doesn't... Um, if we actually make sure that we start descent operations, um, uh, multiple of a Mars day, in other words, uh, precisely one day or two days or so forth, away from when we landed this, I guess we could. So we should get the absolute time. If we get the absolute time and then just make sure that we start landing operations in multiple of Mars Day because you can see right here we're we're close to the periapsis of the other mission, right? The Aries Pod G right now also has the same periapsis because they all came in basically in the same location due to the nature of the the transfer. So I'm going to jot down the time here. It doesn't really matter the date. Well, I guess it does matter the date because it's not a perfect 24-hour day after all. 9.24. And we'll see. August 25th, 1980. Somebody noted that... Uh, I think it was Cosmonaut Crash that noted that we could take a solar panel off of uh, the lander and temporarily put it on here using KES. Um, I hope I packed drills. Otherwise, the whole use of connector ports would be really useless. But if we actually landed the Ares Pod G extremely close to this, we wouldn't need to remove the solar panels. We could just connect it up directly using the KES ports. Uh, that's wishful thinking. That would that re require about 25 meters, and that's just unlikely. I don't know how well the Kerbal jetpacks work on Mars. I doubt they work very well. Oh, great. No, uh, it's still sliding a bit. Hmm. Oh, you know, it's possible that we could just use these engines and try and write it and then, like, wreck it. 
I mean, I could just shut this one down. I'm sure somebody would suggest this, and it's a horrible idea, of course, but... Um, I think having Smart ESS on was probably a bad idea. Is that the wrong one? It seems like it's actually nosing down, isn't it? Yeah, I guess that's not a good idea. Doesn't make sense to me that I would be nosing down in that case, but... Fine, we'll just leave it be. Okay. It is where it is. And let's get back to the... Well, it's not really the Aries Pod G, it's the station up there. And perhaps we should take a look at how to get to Phobos and Deimos first. Those, in my mind, are the easier ones, quote-unquote. Not that nothing can go wrong. Okay, well, it occurs to me that this Lightlander and UDMH Depot are gonna take quite a long time to get to our station. And another realization is that maybe I shouldn't have separated off the heat shield because uh, they could actually air break in the atmosphere together and could have done multiple passes like that. Hmm. There's no way that docking this over here is going to help anything. We won't be able to use those engines anyway. The problem is we can't use these two engines to do our burns. And if we use these uh, Gemini lander engines, we're going to waste fuel that could be used for missions. On the other hand, let's see if we can refuel this portion with the station. If so, we should bring them into the station separately. So we see uh, 3,557 units of Arizine here. And the NTO will just go with that because the station also uses the Gemini Lander engines. So let me just switch to the station. 3,557 is what we're, I mean, we probably don't need to f uh, fill up the whole thing. We just need uh, part of that. Okay, well, it took a while to load up. Okay, so the station has, well, it has 4,000 here. So, yeah, actually, uh, and it has the, this extra fuel down here, too. So, the station could refuel that light lander on its own. So, let's just bring the light lander and the UDMH depot down separately. So, we sort of wasted the fuel used to rendezvous the two, but um, on... On second thought, it seems like this would be a better sort of solution. Now we do need the UDMH depot here in order to dock the light lander because this does not have the right docking port. So the first thing we need to do is bring the UDMH depot down here. And then the second thing we need to do is bring the light lander in. But we could probably do both at the same time. So let me work on doing the plots for that and we'll undock the two and bring them in that way. That'll be quicker. Okay, so each craft is going to make a little burn to reduce its periapsis to match the periapsis of the station. The station's at a 140 kilometer periapsis. These are 242. So we want a tangent point and the periapsis is the most convenient tangent point. So just a little RCS burn here will do the trick. Let's make sure yeah, I don't think uh, the light lander is anywhere near here. Okay, that should do the trick. And now we're going to plot for the retro burn down here. Uh, there's the UDMH depot, so we're 6.3 kilometers away, pretty safe. Uh, this is only reading the fuel from here right now. We've also got fuel in these tanks, but that's locked, so... We've got more Delta V here than is being read, which is good. I think we've got about 3,000. We'll go for the next phasing opportunity. So next time the closest approach distance dips, I'll go with that. One kilometer. Seems good. And does it want to show me that here? Probably not. Um, we'll have to make a significant burn once we meet up with it, but... I don't think these engines are going to take long on that. Probably a minute or two. Oh no, this is going to arrive first, isn't it? I should have stopped it on the previous go-around. 
So this is going to meet up with the target in 7 hours and 14 minutes. Maybe we can have the UDMH Depot do a further retro burn. Yeah, uh, let's retro burn this a little bit further. Oh, come on. Jeez, we gotta watch the ignitions on this, by the way. It does This one has limited ignitions, but... I thought... I mean, for some engines, Mechjab actually sells the fuel down before igniting. Okay. Well, now this should get in about the same time, really. So let's follow this one in. Timing seems to be a bit off here. Yep, a little bit late on this one. Probably even later on the light lander, so that's not great. Let's very slowly close in on the target. Not too fast, because we have to deal with the other mission. But we would like to get within render range. Okay, 16 minutes sounds good. Let's leave it there. Lightlander. Okay, we are already very far away, and so that's not good. Target negative relative velocity. 70 kilometers. Ouch. And this is the mission with less fuel. Okay, well, that gives us a good amount of time, even though it costs a bit more delta V, and we'll need to kill off this 40 meters per second. In 28 minutes, this mission will get within render range. So that's a good gap. That means I have 12 minutes. No, sorry. Uh, 12 minutes to. Yeah, that's right. 12 minutes to dock the UDMH depot. So I guess the catch here is that we need to get there quicker than 12 minutes, obviously. And so I need to use extra delta V and also be prepared to slow down from. A relatively high velocity here. I think we'll have, we'll take four minutes to close and however fast we need to go to do that. And that'll leave me, let's say, four minutes for docking. Let's see, I don't think that that solar panel on Ares Pod A is going to cause problems, but we should probably pay attention to that. We will retract that and just use the panel, well, one of the panels on here. I think the other one might hit that panel over on Aries Pod G, so probably shouldn't do that. Okay, we seem to be all right for docking. And we've docked, okay. So yes, in lieu of this very important panel, of course that panel is necessary for the return home. Let's just not have that out and instead use one of these. I don't know if it's exactly the equivalent, but it'll probably be all right. Uh, we can't see electric charge there for some reason right now. Something's glitched. Always being helpful, Kerbal. Okay, but we have to quickly turn to the light lander now. Okay, so Ares, uh, sorry, light lander is still on approach, and we're making good time here. So that's nice. Negative relative velocity. Come on. Oh, there's some lag around here now. Yep, this is a bit more laggy. Okay, we're now approaching, but. It's a little bit complicated to see where the heck everything is. I think I'm going for right about there. So let's slow down here. Okay, approaching to dock. And maybe after filling up this tank, we can get rid of that heat shield down there because then we'll have used up the fuel in these tanks down here. And we've docked. All right, well, that's the complete assemblage. That's all the things that uh, we need without duplicates to uh, conduct our mission. We've got the Ares Pod A, the Ares Pod G, the UDMH Depot, 
the lunar lander, and the station. I'm somewhat pleased by this, <laughs> at least. Of course, there was the surface base, but that was never meant to join up with anything. All of this had to join up uh, for the sake of the crewed mission. And uh, they have to... Well, one of them is going to have to go into the lunar lander, and the other is going to have to go into Ares Pod G, and they're going to conduct their business then. I think... I think I'll start off with the mission of the lunar, uh, the light lander because that's a little bit easier and I'll build up the suspense for the Ares Pod G which may or may not meet an untimely demise. We'll, we'll find out. Anyway, let me transfer fuel to where it needs to be and I'll be right back. Okay, now for a move that may throw things off a bit, but we're going to dump the heat shield off of this. So, jettison? Oh, okay, that's not quite what I wanted. Uh, decouple node. Oh, so not quite what I wanted, but uh, alright. Let's, uh, no, no, uh, uh, that's off, actually. Um, control from here. And back away from that, please. And that frees up yet another Apollo docking system. We've got too many of those as it is. There should be a number of reaction wheels on board the station right now. I hope. <laughs> I think I think we've got one on the Ares Pod G and possibly on the Light Lander. I don't know. I think so. Yeah, yeah we do. I think we are going to have Philippe try to set foot on Mars and we'll have Newcast do Phobos and Deimos. So let me transfer. Uh, let me just use the stock transfer, I think. Okay, Newcast has been moved to Mark 1 Lander Can Advanced. And we have topped off the fuel there. It's got all its supplies. Well, we get to enjoy this unified assemblage for a brief moment, and now we're going to decouple. Uh, well, hold on. Maybe we should wait until Phobos is in, like, an ideal position. Then again, it, it does orbit Mars very quickly, so I don't think we need to wait, actually. And as far as our other activities, we've got 31 days until we need to handle this Jupiter low-orbit mission. As far as our supplies are concerned, Moonport, Moonport 1 has 100 days, Spaceport 2, 115 days, and... Moon Base 1 Probe. Moon Base 1 Probe? Ah, okay, so it's thinking that this is Moon Base 1, this probe. Um, Union Vessel... Uh, spent... Moon... Supply... Vessel? I think I'm just gonna call it that. It is spent, there is nothing left. And if we switch vessels... Sorry, this is just a little bit of bookkeeping, if you will. And we'll label it a base. Alright, let's get to it. Undock. Switch vessel. RCS back, back, back. I've got that topped off. And these are awaiting the need for them. Now, just on this, we have 1,746. So, it occurs to me that maybe we should go for Deimos first, because it's going to take more Delta V than Phobos does. And I think that's going to be the plan. Well, that's pretty darn good timing, actually. Uh, how much does that cost? About 500, let's say. Okay, well, let's use Maneuver Node Editor. It looks like we could probably get a little bit closer like that. Well, there we have a Deimos encounter. We're going to have to be very careful about it. You know how Deimos and Phobos are. They're not exactly the easiest things to deal with, but I think we've got a pretty quick deal here. 
And we've got 60 days worth of supplies in this lander, so that's not a problem. One thing... I, I wonder if we could just land on this tank. It might be the simplest thing to do. The nice thing about this is that the Gina Core can control the lander once the Kerbal is outside. So that's helpful. There is no ladder. Uh, it was supposed to land so low that the Kerbal could easily get in, but from Phobos and Deimos, they could uh, jump up without any problems anyway. So we've got a good deal here. Let's just get to it. Annoyingly, we only have one goo container here. But, yeah, actually, uh, Newcast can't reset it. Yeah, Newcast is not a scientist. And the goo container was actually there to counterbalance the communication dish. And that's because everything on here is very, very tight. It's a light lander, after all. Okay, that should be good enough. Node? I probably didn't need to use RCS for that, but it'll be all right. And burn. Uh, we better not be pointed at... Well, let me set that as a target. Okay, we seem to be a little bit away, so that's good. Do not want to hit Mars Port 1 with this. Or just Mars Port. I, I don't think there'll be a Mars Port 2. We'll just be adding modules to this. Oh, away it goes. Okay, well we have a Deimos encounter, but it's one of those things where we're only going to be in the SOI for two minutes. So, but then again, actually we do have enough um, thrust to make sure that we can match orbits with Deimos in two minutes. So, actually it wouldn't be a problem to do the entire burn in there, but it might be better if we do some of the burn ahead of time. Relative velocity is 800 meters per second, which we can easily manage with our current stage. Okay, even though we're outside of the SOI, we can go negative relative velocity. We have a reaction wheel, but it's very weak. There's Deimos. We may have to make sure we don't damage it with our thrusters. <laughs> Ah, the wonderful little zigzag orbit that occurs when you're approaching something like Deimos or a small planet. Sometimes, a uh, small moon. Sometimes it occurs with the larger ones too. But. Okay, I think we are low enough on the relative velocity that it's more efficient to wait. Uh, you can see the gap between our orbits. I mean, we can't match orbits with it right now. Not until we're actually in the SOI anyway, so it'll be sort of a real burn if we keep doing this. Now, of course, the Kerbal could just EVA down to the surface. That's one thing. But I do want to get the goo from the surface. I feel like that would be a good thing. Okay, just hold it right there. I'm somewhat disappointed by it looking like this. It's too regular. Okay, 16 by 7. I guess that's good enough. We've got 400 meters per second left, which is tons more than we need. But fortunately, we can just land on RCS, which we will do. Um, just for verisimilitude, let's check out which side would be facing Earth. It's a good enough criteria to determine where to land. Earth is over there. So at 12 o'clock. So we basically want to land over there, which is fine enough because it provides us with uh, solar power. We should ha do a EVA out here. Uh, let's do a crew report. First ever crew report. Um, we have power, so we can transmit. Okay, EVA. EV report, 160, keep, board, high over Deimos, I don't know what it's going to take to get low over Deimos, but anyway, uh, review stored data, transmit data, 
Wish I'd carried the small instruments. Oh, there, there, there we go. I'm like, where are they? Log radiation. Well, we've done these with the probe. Yeah. Probably even on the surface. Ah, perturbation determ is de determined by the surface, even at uh, high over. So, we got a little bit there. We are going counter to Deimos' rotation. I don't know what kind of effect that has, except that there's more velocity there. Our orbital velocity is 2.4 meters per second. The surface is 3.3 against us, but, you know, that's not much anyway. Um, I probably... This is where having the reaction wheel is super helpful, because... We do not want to use RCS to turn right now. And it's looking good on this turn. How much fuel do we have left? Not that much. But we might as well use all of it, so... Touching down on the surface, we'll just sit down on this tank. And I think that would be best. Well, Time Warp 10x. Let's see if Time Warp 10x is where the low over Deimos is. Um, just above, yeah. Okay, so Deimos' Highlands. Let's transmit. And EVA. Okay, and Highlands is where the other probe landed, so we've already done that. Okay. We have already done the other instruments. So let's proceed until we get to another biome, or we need to prepare for a landing. Okay. I think we should affect our first landing here. So, SAS on. Literally just dealing with a handful of millimeters per second of horizontal speed. We are technically at escape velocity if we weren't crashing into the surface. Oh, I just noticed that the surface altitude is creeping up on me. Uh, I was looking at that altitude and that's that the surface is okay I better turn caps lock off. <laughs> better turn caps lock off here. It really snuck up on me. Oh well it's not a flat surface right now but I'm guessing that should be alright. There we go. Oh uh, no um Let's have the reaction wheel sort of... I don't know. Is this considered landed? I wish we had brakes. Um, maybe caps off on and RCS can solve this situation. Okay, that's pretty good. RCS off. We've got it down to maybe 10 millimeters per second. That's pretty good. That'll be good enough to get the Kerbal out. Uh, first of all, crew report uh, from Deimos' Highlands. Uh, we can transmit. Let's get that goo. And we'll keep. I believe we've done all the other instruments, but let's double check. Yeah. But how about seismic? Surface will be monitored for impact vents. Hopefully new casts jumping up and down will be good enough. Okay, well, EVA new casts. Okay, be careful new casts. Take surface sample, keep contingency sample or whatever you want to call it. Um, EVA report. Keep. That's a lot of science. Okay, plant a flag. Pot is slightly drifting away, I think. Okay. New cast. Whoa, no! The flag is going away! Oh, wait. I've got caps lock on because of... Okay, new cast on Deimos. I don't care if it's flying away. 
where did the flag go? Flag go. Yeah. Yeah, it's just doing its own thing. Okay. Uh, let's get the pack on. Grab. Board. Okay, well, the question is whether we can find some other place to land, except for the highlands. So... Um, perhaps we should transmit the data that we've got right now. Let's... Except for the... The goo container. So, EVA report. Oh, and I guess we'll keep the surface sample as well. Wait, what happened to the goo... Oh, well, I guess it's up there. Um... New cast, could you grab that into your pod? Okay, now we're good to go RCS and caps lock off. Up we go. Maybe we should head north. Maybe we should head polar. I mean, why not? I'm worried about that spike though. That spike is suspicious. Or maybe we should investigate the spike. Oh, I just heard an explosion, and an impact got recorded, even though the thing recording the impact is no, no longer on the surface. I don't know what exploded. Might have been the flag. Yeah, I don't know what made the explosion sound. Let me F3. New casts on Deimos crashed into Deimos. Aha, uh -huh. yeah, it was the flag. Our flag crashed into Deimos and recorded an impact. I, I, I don't know, um, did that, is that actually on this? Did that really, really get recorded or not? So planting a flag on Deimos, not the easiest thing to do. Uh, we're, it says stop recording, well, collect impact data. Yeah, we got a little, uh, Impact event. 200 science for our flag smacking back into Deimos. That's amusing. Oh, we've reached Lowlands. Well, all right, I'll take it. And again, our Delta V here is not including the fuel in these pods. So we do have more to work with. And so I expect that we will be going directly to Phobos and then returning to the station. Obviously there was an option to just simply return to the station first and then pick up more fuel and then go to Phobos. Oh, it occurs to me that we haven't done in space over lowlands necessarily. So let me just pause our descent for a sec. Let me do crew report. Yeah, we need to do that. And let me just really just hover over here. EVA. EVA report. Oh, oh, that's just near demos. That doesn't depend on the biome. And let's just check these. Ah, yeah, these are new. Okay, good times. We may now continue our descent. Okay, slow down, slow down, just 7 millimeters per second horizontal. Okay, actually plant, plant us into the surface please. And SAS off, uh, SAS on now. Micro, micrometer, mi microns, wow, down to microns even. Okay, we're tilted in a weird way but that's how the slope is, crew report. Uh, transmit. Uh, I guess we should collect impact data from here because we've got a plant of flag soon. Uh, transmit that. Let's get a safe distance away from the pod. Okay, we are standing. Uh, take surface sample. Keep. EV report. Keep. Plant a flag. 
Let's see if this works better. You cast at Deimos Lowlands. Well, this one go flying off too? Don't know. Okay. Well, it looks like it's actually pretty steady. So this one might stick. All right. Well, let's transmit the one thing that we don't need to keep is the EVA report. So transmit that. Otherwise, we keep that surface sample, biological sample, and that surface sample. Let's see if it's got poles. I'm going to head north again. Caps lock off. Well, actually, it's on right now for me. No, oh, craters. Hold on. Deimos' craters. All right, all right. Isn't it just all one big crater? I mean, seem pretty much full of craters to me. But, hey, another biome. I'm not going to argue. And actually, another crew report as well. Transmit. Um, we don't have enough time at that vertical speed to do an EVA properly. Let's do it there. Okay. EVA report. Oh, it's still in space near Deimos. Doesn't matter. Okay, and the instruments. Temperature is new. I think three biomes is good enough. I mean, we don't. I don't want to milk everything. Maybe we will be sending another mission over to Deimos, and we'll leave the whether there is a pole or not. I mean, we're pretty darn close to the pole, if there is a pole. Hmm, seems a bit floaty. Okay, that's good enough. Less than my 10 millimeter per second limit. Okay, once again, crew report, transmit. Surface stuff, we will transmit all. We we're only 722 meters away from Newcastle at Deimos Lowlands. I think I'm not gonna have him plant a flag this time. And EVA for uh, for Newcast, and just take the surface sample. And the EVA report. Okay. Board. All right, and transmit that EVA report. Excellent, excellent work, Newcast. So, I just want to get Newcast back into orbit in preparation for transferring to Phobos. And so I'm going to go east now. Okay, an apoapsis of close to 10 kilometers. Was I concerned that landing at the pole might cause bad things to happen because of that spike? Perhaps. The mysteries of the spike will have to wait for another day. Okay, we are now making orbit. And we're over highlands, so no indication of a new biome so far. Okay, well, we have landed a Kerbal on Deimos, and I feel justified in waiting for Phobos for the next episode. And then we'll say whether we land a Kerbal on Phobos. We'll leave that as a surprise and then get new cast back to the station assuming nothing goes wrong there and then it'll be landing a Kerbal on Mars. So that'll be our sort of list. Landing Kerbal on Deimos, we've done. Check that off and we have basically two more things to land on. Makes it sound so easy. One out of three achieved. Alright, well on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.